Hello, in this episode we are looking at a flat roof parapet detail, one of the most important junctions for keeping a building watertight. The student markup has raised some familiar questions. Is that a metal plate under the coping stone? What do the thick double lines represent? Is there a chamfer here? And what's happening around the membranes at the upstand? It's easy to see why this area causes confusion. The parapet junction combines roof waterproofing, wall construction, thermal continuity and drainage detailing in a single compact area. So let's unpack it step by step and see how each layer works. Welcome to the Detail Clinic. This series is designed to help students understand the intent behind technical details and identify the key components and apply best practices in their own drawings. Let's jump in. Today's detail is a masonry cavity wall parapet with a warm flat roof buildup. Insulation above the roof deck, a single ply waterproof membrane and a coping stone at the wall head. By the end of today's episode, you'll understand the role of the cavity tray and the weep holes at the parapet, how copings and support plates protect the wall below, what each layer in the flat roof buildup does and how everything connects, and why upstand height and membrane laps are crucial for waterproofing, how the thermal and moisture lines run continuously across the junction. Don't forget, you can download the free student pack that accompanies this episode and more about that a little bit later on. So let's start by running through some of the most common terms we'll come across in today's video. Warm roof. A roof build-up where the insulation is placed above the structural deck, keeping the deck and structure warm and reducing condensation risk. Vapour control layer. This is a layer beneath the roof insulation that restricts vapour from moving into the colder parts of the roof build-up. The upstand is a vertical or raised portion of the roof edge that allows the waterproof membrane to turn up, preventing water ingress at the junction. A coping stone is the capping at the top of a parapet wall that sheds rainwater to both sides, protecting the wall below. You can also get coping stones that shed to one side only. The cavity tray is a damp-proof barrier that catches any water entering the cavity and directs it to the outside through weep holes. The weep holes are small openings that allow any water or condensation buildup in the outer leaf or under the coping to drain out safely. The support plate or flashing is a metal or rigid support beneath the coping that closes the cavity off and ensures that the DPC remains nice and stable. So let's take a little look at how this junction is built up from the inside to the outside and bottom to top. So starting at the internal face, we have a 12.5mm and 40mm insulated plasterboard as the internal wall finish. Attached to the blockwork in a leaf with dots and dabs. The cavity between the inner and outer leaves is fully filled with insulation to maintain the wall's thermal performance. At the top of the wall, the cavity is closed with a cavity tray that includes the weep holes that we've just mentioned earlier, and the weep holes are positioned at regular intervals. The tray catches any water that may find its way behind the coping or through the joints and channels it safely outwards. Above this, the coping stone spans across the cavity and is bedded on a DPC supported by a metal plate. This was one of the student's main questions. The metal plate or flashing closes the cavity and stabilizes the DPC. The coping itself has drips on both sides designed to throw water clear of the wall. Below the coping, we see the roof build up. So this is a warm roof, meaning that the insulation sits above the deck. Here we have an 80 mil plywood deck on joists covered by a vapor control layer, then two layers of rigid insulation, and finally the single ply waterproof membrane. Where the flat roof meets the parapet, an insulated upstand above the base of the horizontal insulation is installed to improve the thermal performance. The waterproof membrane continues up the face of the upstand and laps over the insulation, connecting neatly to the flashing and the coping arrangement. The waterproof membrane upstand must be a minimum of 150mm from the finished roof level. So let's move on to the student questions. Is that a metal plate beneath the coping stone? Yes. Beneath many copings, you'll find a support plate or flashing, often stainless steel or aluminium. It closes the cavity and helps support the DPC across the cavity. What do all the thick black lines represent? So in this drawing, the thick black lines are showing the flashing that laps over the upstand to prevent water ingress. Each flat roof waterproofing membrane will require the specific kind of abutment pieces and flashing requirements. 
Is that a chamfer there in the corner? Yes. So a chamfer or fillet is installed depending on the requirements of the flat roof waterproofing material and the manufacturer's recommendations. It helps direct water away from the edges or corners of the roof towards the drainage. What does this little element represent? Well, so this is behind the insulated plasterboard. It's an indicative dot and dab adhesive that's used to fix the insulated plasterboard to the wall. So let's run through some of the key points and considerations in this detail. So waterproofing continuity. The upstand must extend at least 150 above the roof surface. The membrane should lap securely under the coping or termination flashing. Cavity drainage. Always include weep holes above the cavity tray to let moisture escape. Thermal continuity, so the roof insulation should meet the cavity insulation to prevent a cold bridge at the parapet. If the two insulations can't physically meet, there should be a suitable overlap between the two to minimise cold bridging. In this case, both the cavity insulation and the roof insulation extend up beyond the finished roof. Coping design, so provide drips both sides to shed water of the wall face, so support plates or flashings must be non-ferrous and durable. Vapour control, so we need to ensure that the, the VCL, vapour control layer, under the roof insulation is continuous and sealed at the joints. Coordination, so check heights and upstand dimensions against manufacturer guidance and insulation thicknesses. Maintenance, parapets are high risk for water ingress, so we need to ensure that we have good access and durable materials. As always, project specifics matter. So substrate, moisture, exposure, finishes, acoustic and fire requirements, warranties, insurer requirements, manufacturer guidance can all shift the final arrangement. There is always more than one way to design a detail. So don't forget, you can download the free student pack for this episode, which includes our fully annotated parapet detail, a glossary of all the terms that we've come across in this video, the wash checklist for this junction, and key points and design considerations. You can find the download link in the video description or over at First and Architecture. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel and all that good stuff. Thank you so much for watching and as always, happy detailing.